say, David Kennedy. Don't forget about me. <laughs> I have to say, you have one of the coolest cities that I've been to in this country. And I'm actually very proud of it. From what I feel, most of you are very proud of it. So congratulations. And uh, I also want to say um, thank you, first of all, for coming here, for taking time out of your lives, for uh, just spending an hour with us and just us. But really, thank you. It means so much to us. And I just could not be more honored to be here with you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, San Antonio. It was awesome. Good night. I have a drink for you. Oh, I'll be right back. It's not Pepsi. <laughs> it's delicious and refreshing. So listen to Thank it. Thank you. You guys, here's our here's what we do with Q and A's. I know you like. You are lovely. Um, our whole thing with Q and A's, and we do this a lot. Is it's our opportunity to ask you a question. It's not a, an opportunity for us to talk about ourselves. Like, we like to get to you, and and if your questions are about us, we're not going to answer them. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we like to break down our lives in reality. So much of Hollywood is this expectation that everything's great, and we have great lives, but we like to give you the truth of how we live and who we are and the reality of who we are as people. So... It's a little different than a lot of Q and A's. It's not just about all these glowing memories of these great experiences. All right, so we'll awesome. ask you guys. will ask questions and we'll answer. Uh, do you want to go out? Or do you I, got go? I got it. I got it. Yeah, start. you're gonna start as our first yeah, reporter. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. He's gonna be in the streets. Hey, I'm on the streets of San Antonio. <laughs> Who's got a good you question? You got a bird. You got a bird. I got a bird. All right. Well, you got one. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take it easy. Bird. This is gonna be a good question, right? What's your name? Nikki. Nikki, everybody. Reporter Nikki here on the scene. So, say, oh, wait a second. So, say it's your 21st birthday this weekend. What would you pick as your first drink ever? That's a pretty good question. Well, I this is a very American question. question. What if I'm a European? It's his 21st birthday. All right, all right. 21st birthday. Matt, what would be your drink of choice? My beer. Your beer. Do you want a sip of my beer? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Is it actually your 21st? Literally, it's oh, his birthday. Man. How did I miss that? You knew it instantly. You're the most terrifying thing here. <laughs> Can you stand up real quick? Wow. Turn around. It's the beard that really fucks you up. <laughs> this chick will kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Hey, uh, happy birthday. Uh, yeah, I'd have a beer, too. <laughs> um, oh, there's a microphone here. Uh, who has Check. another question? Hi. You're in the front row. You're very excited to be here. Um, I have a personal question for the both of you. What? Aquarius. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Me, too. Me, too. How did it feel during the original scream, this stab scene between the both of you? Oh, it hurt. <laughs> and then we did it again. Um, I, You know, I just remember the exhilaration. I mean, we had been shooting elements of that scene for how many days, Jamie? Uh, 25. 25 days. Like, a lo it was a lot. So I think we were all just pumped. And, like, I mean, we were loving what we were doing and just excited to be there and the energy of that scene is pretty intense. So, um, yeah, I don't they know. Were, they were busy killing. I was busy laying in my own blood. <laughs> <laughs> For real. What you got back there? Uh, who has a question back here? I like your hair. 
Matt did not okay. answer your question, by the way. Oh, oh, I um, look, I I think that that scene has become this iconic scene for that movie. Um, in the moment, I can assure you, nobody was trying to do anything iconic. We were all trying to make the day and survive. It was super intense because it was a lot of energy for a long time. But at the end of the day, I think we're all really proud of that scene, and we all love that movie. Yeah. Yeah. Should we, should we walk? Do we want to let people use this microphone? I'll come down. Hi. I'll find some ways. Um, so when you were skating. Yeah. Loud? Okay. Um, when you were skating SLC Punk, what was, like, one of your favorite scenes to shoot? Well, the one scene that I did, um, I had to cry a lot. Uh, I am uh, <laughs> I'm in a movie called SLC Punk. He's <laughs> that is oh, not. Oh, man. It is funny. I, I think that you get some cons that there are people that know that movie, love that movie. So, uh, But if you don't, that's okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, th there's a scene in that movie where my best friend dies. He ODs accidentally. His name's Heroin Bob, and I cried in that scene. And for me, it's a moment where I was having a really hard time with the work. I had It was a scene right before lunch. I faked it. I was embarrassed of the work. Everyone went to lunch. And I sat in this little room and thought about all these things I wanted to say to my dad. And so when we went back after lunch, I did that take in one take. It was on film, so it was a 20-minute take on film. Uh, I did it once. I cried, like, hysterically. And if I watch it now today, two things happen. I cry because it's a huge moment in my life. And emotionally, when I see me breaking like that, it breaks my heart. And two, our careers are not full of moments that we're super proud of. Like, I have lots of things. I'm like, oh, God, that's not great. But that is one of those moments in my career that when I feel insecure, when I feel I may never work again, when I am filled with doubt, I hold on to that scene as a moment I'm proud of, and it keeps me going because it's not always easy. I haven't worked in a year, and I just got a big three-picture deal. Oh, on yes! Yeah, I set you up for that. Yeah, I know. So. Yeah. Woo, woo. Ma, 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 you ma, just ma, broke ma, it. Ma. You um, just broke no, the news. No, 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 no. You can't say anything. Other than that. But listen. Shit gets hard. And this idea that our lives are these golden journeys, not working for a year and having three kids and having your son go, Dad, why aren't you working? Sucks. So these little moments that you hold on to that get you through to the next moment are the most important beats. And for me, that movie, that scene, that time, I'm super proud of, and it keeps me going. So thank you for your question. Yes. Wait, I just have a question with that. You yes, ja Jamie. You the floor <laughs> recognizes Jamie. I know. <laughs> you said we're not allowed to say anything. No, you can't say not the thing. Not about who or what. Yeah, but. yeah. Oh, because I'm just saying it might be on the internet <laughs> after him. And it might, yeah. 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 No, I just, yeah. We've got a guy, a person right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. You go for it, bro. You're good. Very sorry. Go ahead. Well, <laughs> it's nice to meet you, Matthew Lilai. It's an honor to meet you. So I got a question for you. Happy anniversary for the Scooby-Doo live action movie. And, yes. this, and this year, I rewatched it with my brother on, on HBO Mosh. We rewatched the two live action movies, and it was just an honor to meet you because it's the dream come true. Because. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got a question for Matthew Lilai. How is it? What is your favorite experience when you film Scooby-Doo 1 and 2? I will tell you, it's a good question. Yes. Oh, everything not to do with filming that movie. <laughs> <laughs> it was hanging out and playing, like, Dark Gun Wars at Freddy's house. It was going surfing. It was living on a little <laughs> island. But the best part of that movie is that I will get kids in my line and you can do the shaggy voice uh -huh. and change a kid's day <laughs> and make them happy. So for me, that's the best part. Do it. Can oh, you keep settle down, do Matthew? Do it. Please give us Shaggy's impression. Do it. Shaggy's impression. 
Do it. Give us Shaggy impression. Do it. Do it. Shaggy. Shag. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, all right. Um. Yours. <laughs> Uh, Ski's been trying to steal that part for like I 10 do it, years. I do it better, by no, the way. No, you don't. Do it. <laughs> Quiet, please. <laughs> you son of a bitch. That's my job. It was good. It was better. <laughs> it's my job. It was better. It was better. <laughs> All right, now we're lined up. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Go with it. All right. Um, hi. Um, hi. Scooby Doo is my favorite movie and my favorite cartoon of all time. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to know what was it like to take over such that iconic role from Casey Kasem? What was it like for you? It's an mm. honor. <laughs> and at some point in the not too distant future, I will give it back. But as long as I have it, I will cherish it. You do awesome, by the way. Thank I don't you think so much. anybody could have taken over. There's for so Casey many Kasem people that could have. No, you, you you've done I, awesome. Thank you so much. You guys, Jamie's here too. <laughs> it's getting very and uncomfortable. Ski, and and ski. Ski. Skeet stole my zoink, so he's I'm I'm present. Ruh -roh. It's not shaggy, don't worry. It was really good, actually. I'm having like a reaction. Oh. I feel like I have to answer when I hear it. All right, go ahead. Next question. Okay, so my daughter and I drove almost four hours here to come see you guys, all just so I can ask you to say, I'm feeling woozy here. Can you please say that? Wow. The Matt Lillard impression hour. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how it goes. I'm <laughs> feeling woozy. <laughs> what do you use? No, you got to uh, do it again. You got to do it again. More what pain, more pain. pain. Skeet, punch him. Don't. No. <laughs> What's your line? You have like I, I don't, I don't. I'm not in that scene. Wait, do you remember though? <laughs> <laughs> you got to tell people when, the, when you, when they, when Skeet threw the phone. Oh yeah. Do you guys know that that was totally improv with him and Matt? And Matt really was saying, "You hit me with the phone, you dick." Like that. That's a real Matt, like, to skeet, like, yo, bro, I didn't fucking remember that in the script. <laughs> it's one of the most brilliant. It was an was, accident. It was not an accident. <laughs> um, the fu there's a funny story. So um, Tatum had Rose. the other F-bomb. Rose McGowan had, F you had two F-bombs in that movie. And she had the other one, and then they cut hers and gave it to me, and she's still angry about it to this day. Because she had a good line. It's just mine was better. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what, what he's mean by that? You only get two F bombs in R rated movies. Was that, was it? Uh, oh, was that it? Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 You got, you got, well, well, I don't know what I it was then. Was, but yeah. yeah, anyway, there's a. There I really is a do set have a amount. question about that scene. Do you think Schumacher survived? With the TV hippo. Oh, oh boy. Moderator dropping some knowledge. Everybody here for grab Darren. a pillow. Look at, look at this. <laughs> We're going to be sleeping for point. a little while here. Let's who, hear it, Matt. Who thinks Stu is alive? <laughs> who thinks he's dead? Do, he has. He's alive. He's alive. Um, no, I think, he's, <laughs> I think he's alive. I think that the writers in Six uh, put in a bunch of, is that the one you were just in? That I did five. five. Oh, five. Five is, uh, all the writers were like, there's a bunch of, um, Easter eggs that he's alive. So, really? like he's alive. Wait, what? Hmm, what could what those Easter egg be? was there's that? A, there's a, a scene where they're doing. <laughs> Listen, he eats this shit up, by the way. Yes. <laughs> oh, hi. You're doing great, by the way. <laughs> I Dude, thought that was time. you standing there out of oh, my yeah. periphery. He eats this shit up. Yeah, because I want to be back. I would like to make more money. Hi. Hi. You're up. Yeah. Well, wait, is Randy dead? I mean, did I really walk in front of that van? He's definitely dead. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I'll give you guys a clue. I'm dead and I came back. Oh! oh. You did. So maybe Spoiler. you need to be dead to come back. Spoiler. <laughs> Spoiler. What's your question? You look amazing, by the way. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, uh, my name's Emily, and I wanted to ask you guys, out of the roles you've played, how do you feel about being such an iconic character to everybody? Oh, 
Jamie, what's Emily, up? it's very hard to be an icon. <laughs> <laughs> Some uh, Somebody's got to get me a cigar. Uh, you know, honestly, I speak for myself and definitely these guys, but they'll have their own answers. Uh, when we did this movie, it was a break of a lifetime for me, and it was a little baby horror movie, little tiny movie that we didn't know what we had. We had an iconic director and a huge star and Courtney and a bunch of emerging stars. So we didn't, you know, we didn't know. We had an amazing script. And that the movie became, it's more relevant today than it was when it came out. And you guys keep it alive. So did I have any idea this was going to happen? No way. Do I feel 100% blessed and lucky? Yes, I do. And that's all because of you guys. So thank you. We had no, I had no idea. Did you have any idea? No, none, none. Nor do I consider myself an icon, but. <laughs> <laughs> You're a goddamn icon. Your hair's purple from here. Yeah, it is. Wow, super cool, dude. You should do it. Do you know how many single moms consider you an icon? <laughs> you know. I only counted the married ones. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this Q&A needs to get back on track <laughs> Wait. quick. Wait. <laughs> it was a joke. It was teed up. Next, <laughs> next question. Uh oh Hi. <laughs> Uh, I have a question for all of three of you. Um, okay. If you could uh, travel back in time to the stream sketch, but you were not allowed to talk to yourself, what would you say to each other? Okay, guys, this is one of the more intense uh, Q&As we've had. <laughs> if we could travel back in time, this is like a three-parter, <laughs> and we could ask ourselves questions. No, not yourself. Okay, if we could travel back in time. You can only talk to each other. And only talk to each other? What self. would we say self. to oh, each other? Your younger <laughs> self. What would you tell your younger self? No, no, not your own. Not your own younger okay, self. Okay. No. <laughs> what, what would I tell young Jamie? Yeah. yeah. For example. Jamie. <laughs> I don't know what the hell I would say. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I would say. Well, I don't know what I would say. I would say. Oh no. Let me tell you what I would say. That. First of all, I would have stolen more props and sold them for money. Because that would have been cool. You are not allowed to do that. You have a lot of rules for somebody that just said, yeah, we can travel back in time. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> but with There provisos. are certain rules. There are the rules. Okay. There are certain rules. Yes. Um, uh. I would tell you right now, I, will, I would say to Wes Craven in a in a very clear way that he changed my life, and I'm so grateful from top to bottom that in my life today, 25 years later, he's still allowing me to feed my kids in cons like this, and that is a gift from yeah. him. It's very sweet, but that does not follow the rules. Yeah. She said it's just us. <laughs> oh, it's just <laughs> us? Yeah. I would tell you not to hit me with the phone. No. <laughs> Dick. That's fair enough. <laughs> I would tell myself, don't walk in front of a van. Can't talk to You're yourself. Not allowed to talk. You guys are I'm not following to the rules. It's my quantum universe. <laughs> oh. The question was confusing. It had six parts. <laughs> yeah. Next heard. question. That was good, though. It was a good question. All right. What's up, Bunny? Or is that a mousy? Bunny? That's well, a screen. Well, it says, what's your favorite Disney movie, but it has Ghostface on it. Yo, Yo Ghostface is sparkling now. Yeah, I know. This mm -hmm. I've seen more sparkling ghost face. I love it. I love it. And yeah. I and I made the ears myself. Have you guys? Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this. This is a real question. I'm just not a weird. Question. Have you guys heard of bimbo ghost face? Yes. It's a, okay. <laughs> I, I thought that was a wet. Oh, you don't see bimbo ghost face? No. Oh, she's making the rounds. Where? It's <laughs> yeah. It's great. Bimbo. It's come to Texas. Oh, I thought bimbo. It was a, <laughs> it was a West Coast thing. <laughs> Matt, what's happening back there? I can't see. No, you. Wait, let's get her question right here. Okay. Well, my question is specifically for Skeet, and it's um, oh, how did I'll you? Sorry. Now, yeah. wonder Matt disappeared. <laughs> He's like right there. Oh my god. Um, but how did you get the part specifically? Like when you, I mean, you read the script obviously, but how did you get? Uh, I I read the script, and then they asked me to. I think I did two scenes in the audition. I went in and met with Wes and the right. casting director and um, and read a couple scenes. Yeah. yeah, and then they were like, okay, maybe. 
No, they were they they were happy, so they cast me. There's no other person who could have played your role anyway. So oh. you're awesome. By the <laughs> way, that's not true because I auditioned for his part. <laughs> <laughs> no, she said that could have played it. That could have though. Oh, like I could have played it. <laughs> you, no, because you were awesome as too. So oh. like yeah, I, you were, well you were meant a, to. It's be. actually a good question. It's I auditioned for his Billy, part. Okay. and they were like, "You're super funny, not that cute." You are for sure not making out with Nev Campbell. You're hot too. <laughs> Little did they know. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and uh, but then they said, "Will you come back in two hours and meet Wes Craven?" And I had like eleven pages to memorize in two hours, and I did. And I auditioned once, and then Wes Craven looked at me and said, "You got the part." Wow. Which in this town. Rare does not happen. I don't think I did it once. I think I was being dramatic there. Wow! But I got the part in the room. Yeah. Which wow. At the time, I was like, I don't want to do this stupid horror movie. <laughs> wow. True story. Because we, I, you know, Wes Craven had done a bunch of horror movies, and not all of them were successful. And I had just done a pilot, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go do a TV show. Wait, you slept with a pilot? <laughs> I'm, you only had to audition once. Hold on, you went twice. I went once. How many times did you go? Like 16 times. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you were doing a pilot? What did you say? Yeah, I was doing a television pilot, and I thought I was going to end up on this TV show. And then I did this movie, and we were doing a horror movie. Man, and that nobody pilot expected told him a bunch of lies. The idea that we're still here celebrating that, this movie, is crazy. Yes. Because nobody expected it to be this successful. The fact that we're here is a testament to you, not that movie. But now we are, and so guys, I want to let you know my, my table's open from five to seven. <laughs> and that's a joke. <laughs> All right, next question. Thank you. Thank you for your question. I get didn't crazy really with you. Get crazy with your questions. Oh, um, this is your moment. It's going to be on YouTube. Well, I wanted to say hi to Hot Pants over there. Oh, he, he's not yeah. even paying attention. Is that Matt Pants? Yes, I have. Um, That's my drag queen name. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we came up with. Lady, Lady Hot Pants. Lady Hot Pants. I can't wait to be a drag queen. So, <laughs> uh, that could be news as we're announcing that now. <laughs> this is the three-picture deal. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, y'all played Scream, which is a horror movie, and you know, y'all are known for that. But do y'all like being known for that or being like your goofy selves? Like instead of, you know, being just known for Scream or do y'all like, you know, more or less being the goofy dudes? <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I've <laughs> ever been a goofy dude. <laughs> I think you we have the answer <laughs> to that. <laughs> She's like the skeet. How you like being a goofball? <laughs> You, no wonder you receded skeet, back then. Skeet is divorced women caviar, okay? <laughs> he hasn't aged one. So one I, I, I'll take the goofy role, Mantle. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I like... Well, I know what your point is. And yeah. I, I mean, I, I, you know, first of all, Scream is obviously a huge part of all of our careers, but... Yeah, I mean, there's a part of me that wishes people saw other things more. Jericho, sure. Um, Jericho. But, but, <laughs> I mean, I have a, yeah, I have some stuff people know. But, um, yeah, I mean, at times you you wish other movies were seen as much as Scream, but I can't control that, so I don't spend a lot of time thinking about it. I, wear, I think we're, I, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm just happy people know me. <laughs> but Scream is, uh, yeah, it's the gold standard of my career. And, uh, it's, you know, yeah. it's still going. Mal yeah. You know, Malabizi, Foshizi, there's a few things. Harold and Kumar, is this your bush? Um, <laughs> so, yeah, but it's Scream is, you know, very we're very lucky. I am. We all are. Yeah. You can't control what's going to break out. I think Scream's gone past the horror movie status and just become an amazing movie. Good talk. Real talk. Poor, poor reporters. Like, what, what am I doing here? Can you? Now, why don't you ask a question? Easiest money I've made all year. 
You, wait, wait, you got wait, paid for this? Your last question was great, by the way. Your last question was great. What's your next question? I got more questions. Yeah, you ask one. You get it. Okay, so Skeet, you got Why is it going to be about Skeet? <laughs> <laughs> you got a question. You got to slip into Billy Loomis's skin 25 years later with the hair, the blood, the oh, white t-shirt. Yeah. How did that feel? What was it like on set? Uh, on set was fine. It just felt weird. Uh, I mean, it took me... It took me about a month to say yes to doing it. Um, but Why so long? I, I wasn't sure it would work. It didn't feel right necessarily, and it's a you know it's a big franchise, and I just I didn't want to cheapen it in any way. And I also was looking at my career and like, is this something I really want right now to be the highlight versus other things I had filmed or was doing? And then there were certain things that happened that made me uh, less precious about it. Um, but, yeah, it was definitely weird. I mean, I, you know, I knew, like, they, they didn't necessarily know they were going to lean into the, uh, to me, looking like Billy did until I showed up in North Carolina. And they were like, wow, you look really young. Like, maybe if we just shave and, like, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do it precise. And... And we did, but it was just strange, strange. Um, like going to a high school reunion? I, I haven't been to one of those, but um, <laughs> but it was, I mean, I guess, yeah. I, I think that's probably the similar feel for sure. It just But his reunion, everybody was dead. <laughs> that, that's true that. story. Um, Back but, to the audience. But yeah, it was, it was interesting, yeah. Can I tell you a funny story about high school reunions? Uh-uh. So at some point, I was going to like my 50th <laughs> high school reunion. Are you? Can you come up here? I'm, I'm right here. I'm right here. Okay. And then um, I said to my sister, I was like, I'm not going to go. Everyone knows what I'm doing anyways. <laughs> my sister goes, it's not about you, asshole. <laughs> That's my story. <laughs> I like your sister. <laughs> I had dinner with her, remember? Yes. Yeah. Wait well, a second. Settle, there were like down. 12 of us. Settle oh, down. And here. it was all his family and me. What you got? Hi. Hi, my name's Calvin. Uh, it's nice to see all y'all. And um, my question was for all three of y'all. If y'all had an opportunity to play any superhero in a superhero movie, what superhero would it be? Ooh, Captain Underpants. It's <laughs> <laughs> so creepy, dude. Uh, I, why is that creepy? Because there are children in the audience. They love Captain Underpants. They're going to go home and you did not read it research then. Research the internet and find Captain Underpants. You uh, don't know who Captain Underpants I, is? Uh, I forgot. Oh, yeah. there's nothing dirty about it. It's a kid's book. <laughs> this Q&A took right, a right, turn. Right, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Wait, wait, say I that louder. No, you're the one with the dirty mind. Okay. There we go, there we go, there we go. Maybe, maybe I am. You heard it here first. <laughs> okay. Um, what, what would you, what superhero would you be? So, James Gunn, who did... Everything. Yeah, James Gunn did um, Guardians of the Galaxy and Suicide Squad. So we went in and pitched Plastic Man after Scooby-Doo 2. I did not get that job. <laughs> did anyone? No, but I wanted the job. I think they just, I actually think they're making it now. Really? Yeah, I thought it was a good idea. He just became the head of DC. He's, yes, very powerful. <laughs> yeah. For the record... If you ever ask me what movie I want to do, I, my answer is always m James Gunn's next movie. I think he is a, he's like one of my favorite people in the world. And I think the way he makes films for people on the outside, he looks at it from, he's, he's, a, he's a geek. He's outside the normal sphere of people who are cool. And he makes movies for those of us who are also on the outside of society, and so I always want to be in his movies. So if you ever run into James Gunn, tell him I'm ready. <laughs> he also wrote Scooby Doo one and two. So did you tell him this at his wedding? I did not tell him at his wedding. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to DC, and I hope <laughs> I'm in that universe. That'd be good. Jamie, superhero. Who's left? Who's left in Marvel? Who's le you're asking me? What's like an under 
sir. Underappreciated character. I, why are you looking at me? <laughs> I, I don't even I watch think like, I think Marvel like the movies. raccoon needs a friend. <laughs> or Groot. Can I be like Groot's friend who's like a bush? I could probably do a bush. Uh, no comment. <laughs> We're moving on. Where are you going, Captain Underpants? I, not to a bush. <laughs> Guys, the Q&A is going to start any minute, I swear. <laughs> We're going to take the next guy's question. Grab that microphone. Don't Ooh. be scared. This is for all three of you guys? All three. You like you guys love the trifectas. What's your favorite scary movie? Oh! I'll start. Showgirls. Absolutely frightening. <laughs> that was a quote from Scream 2, but you died. Now, and you died. Oh, was it? And I didn't even died, know that. And then you came back. Oh, well. Uh, I like uh, The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Ooh. Religious horror terrifies me. And I'm not even religious. Uh, mine is Screams. Yeah! <laughs> He's just going for the... Look at the that. Wait, I have a question. How old were you when you saw Exorcist? Oh, wow. Probably 15. Okay, Matt, how old were you? Good talking I to you. I have no idea. Well, how old were you? I was ten. Ooh. And it's yeah, Ooh. it pretty much ruined. You me. didn't sleep for weeks. But I, I thought that was bad. But I do have some of the mothers that come up, and you're like, my daughter loves Scream. When you died, she cried, and it's, and it's a baby. Like, <laughs> I'm like, it's. Please don't <laughs> let your baby watch Scream too. <laughs> Just let your baby watch Barney. All right. Max Cable, <laughs> Riverdale. Come on. <laughs> Scooby. My baby, my fetus loves Scream 2. My fetus. <laughs> wow. Is that, don't put that on YouTube. I'm up for that a couple. That's not of appropriate. Disney Plus cartoon. <laughs> this half of this crowd got it. The other half is on an edible. Uh, <laughs> All right, next question. <laughs> <laughs> let's Get there. Go, let, we have to go lightning round. We yeah, have, let's do a lightning round. We're n just so you know, from here on, we're never getting to you. <laughs> Sorry. Damn, this is like a family guy Q&A. This is a good line. Uh-oh. There you go. I'm ready. Speed round, go. Oh, hi. My name is Max, and I got a very interesting question for I you. can't wait. So, um, Gabe, hold that microphone. I got him. I got him. Okay. You're doing great. Okay, yeah. so uh, my question is, for a final Scream movie, how would you feel if they decide to go in the direction of a Nightmare on Elm Street, a new Nightmare, as a good send-off to the whole series? Am I in it? Yeah, like all the Great films. idea. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, um, Hi. Were you all familiar with the rules of horror film, like how to survive it before he did Scream, or were you all shocked as we were? Finding out there are rules to survive a horror film. Yeah, I think we were shocked because I don't think there were yeah, rules. Yeah, I had no idea there were rules. <laughs> yeah, we were all shocked. Thank you. All shocked. Next question. Matthew, you were my childhood man. That's wow. Freaking yeah. awesome. <laughs> this is not a question. This is an inappropriate groping moment. <laughs> Next question. Um, I, I just got to ask you, all, all three of you guys, what do y'all do to get into character when you guys are doing shooting? Wow. I mean, it depends, that's a, it depends that's on the a long, long, long. It yeah, energy. Like, I jump up and down and act like an idiot. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um. <laughs> just speak your truth. <laughs> um, if you chose to be famous, like, if you had a choice to be famous, would you choose to be famous? No. Whoa, wait that's a, a great, minute. That's a great question. Wait a minute. Run that back. <laughs> she asked Matt if he chose to be famous, would he choose to be famous? And you said, no. I didn't choose to be famous. Here's the thing you have to know. So anyone in this audience, if you are on the outside of high school or society or if you're a weirdo, if you happen to be in cosplay right now, I might be talking to you. Being on the outside and owning your original voice, being a weirdo is the fucking best place to be. But, <laughs> yes, yes. And the thing you have to understand, so I was a kid with a learning disability, I was obese, I had glasses and braces, and I was lost. 
and I found an acting class because my dad said to me, you need to take an acting class or a typing class. He made me eventually take a typing class too, which was totally bullshit. <laughs> but I got into an acting class, and it was the only place I was ever good at anything ever in my life. I am not here to be famous. I am only doing what I have only ever done and have ever been good at. And it's the only thing that gives me joy. So if you are on the outside and you're not like every other football player in the world or somebody that's represented on t TV, find something you're passionate about and just do that shit. You will find a way to be successful. I am not here to be famous. I've only chased one thing because it's the only thing I loved. Just do what you love and you will find yourself in joy. And that's our whole point is find joy. Yeah, to, to further that, I, how many of you are artists of any sort? Yeah? Um, I, you know, in terms of our art, in terms of acting, filmmaking, all that, and I guess in all art, don't hold Hollywood as the standard for what you're doing. Don't think you're not an equal actor to Matt or myself or anybody else because Hollywood hasn't figured it out. Do what, like he said, do what you love to do and don't give a damn about the results and who knows what will happen. But if you decide not to do the thing you love, you've hurt yourself. So don't hold Hollywood up here. Uh, you guys probably make better movies than most of us make if you choose to do it and you put all your heart and mind into it. But I wouldn't hold Hollywood up, up on a pedestal. Thank you for your, that was a great question. By Thank the you. way, you're my favorite person, like, actor-wise, because you made me realize that being weird is okay. And um, <laughs> you were basically just the one who figured out, like, oh, my God. Don't watch us! Here we go. <laughs> uh, somebody, you got to be this tall okay. to go on the ride. Sorry. My name is Zaylee, and you, uh, my question is what? Hold it down. Oh, okay. Hold it down. Okay. Yeah, okay. Hold on. Let me just is it? Okay. You do it. Okay, guys. Do it, do it. How many Screamcast members does it take to fix uh, a microphone? Okay. Three. What horror icon would y'all guys want to go against? Oh. Any of them. I will. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. That's a good question. That's a good question. This is a good. Are good you saying Ghostface or us? No, us. Y'all. Tell me you're in Texas Anyone. without Wait. telling me you're in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> what horror icon kind of y'all like today? <laughs> Too far. Too far. Um, Bring it back. <laughs> I'm going to say, man. I don't know, J J J uh, Jason, but no, honestly, Michael Myers. Yeah. Michael Myers is the unkillable, craziest icon for me. I don't know. That's hard. I like that There's question. Too many good ones. We'll take them all. Yeah, that's a good answer. Is uh, is Ghostface an icon? Beyond. <laughs> Beyond. In fact, I have a theory. That was like a cheer moment, and then you went too far. No. <laughs> Can I tell you why? Can yeah. I tell you my two yeah, seconds? Yeah. You guys tell me if I'm wrong. Here's why Ghostface, I think, can almost eclipse. I don't want to say that because I love everyone from Chucky, Mike Myers, everyone. Ghostface, I think, can be the biggest because it's not an entity of its own. It's who embodies it. So you guys are part of Ghostface. And Emma Roberts is part of Ghostface. And Laurie is part of Ghostface. Think about that. So everybody, and when I go to these cons, I see how everybody says, I'm like, I'm Ghostface. Because it's not a scary person. It's a person that takes on the role. So that was my theory. I thought it would be better than that. But <laughs> that really, that took a shit. That's oh, it. I like it. You get it? No, it's good. Multiple good. Ghostface. Good question, though. Yeah. Okay, so who is your least favorite person to work with on the film? Oh my God, are you trying to get us killed? I asked the tough questions. Not that tough. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way anyone's answering that. Skeet, uh, all right, Chuck. I will say, 
No one will ever answer that question, but I will say that it's not a lie that we all got along. And it's we true. really it's a really rare set to have that. There were no problems. Hey Matthew. Hey guys, how you doing? Good. I just wanted to say, um, you know, I'm an aspiring actor in San Antonio and you and um thirteen ghosts. You're the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing now. And I don't think that I would ever pursue acting without you. And <laughs> you're my guy, man. You and your interactions in the movie, like. <laughs> Do it. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, I did want to ask about the movie, though. The scene where your back is broken by the by the breaker. How yeah. was that? Uh, so the juggernaut takes me and slams. I think I do something super heroic. Uh, you save Tony Shalhoub. You put him behind. So yeah, glass. yeah. That's what so. I do, bro. I just you, save you, d people. you die for the cause, man. I will tell you, by the way. I didn't tell you this last night. Uh, my middle child is non-binary. God bless them. Is um. <laughs> is uh, turned 18. They turned 18 on Wednesday. And we were out celebrating their dinner, their, like, 18th birthday. And my son started to choke to death. That's not a joke. It was oh, horrible. And Heather jumped up, my wife, and then my uh, Addison jumped up, and he was freaking out. And I, like, threw back the thing, and I gave him the Heimlich in the middle of a restaurant and saved his life. Wow. And not one person had a phone to record that shit. <laughs> I would have been trending. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> Imagine the, <laughs> the person who sat there and filmed it. <laughs> that but Matthew Lillard? Uh, <laughs> never mind. Um, I would just wanted to make that about me for a second, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Well, because oh, you I saved to Tony Shalhoub. I forgot, you, I forgot to tell you guys. You saved Tony um, Shalhoub, that's why. By the way, God bless you. everyone should know how to do the Heimlich because it, it's not. I've had to use easy. that one time and save this dude. Saved a billionaire's life and he never gave me a dime. <laughs> uh, sorry, I don't, the question was about Tony Shalhoub. I saved him, yes. I don't really have anything else to say. Except for I once saved my son. Uh, awesome. That's the dumbest thing I've ever said. Where's your question? Guys. This is a question for uh, both, uh, all three of y'all. Grab that, grab that microphone, bro. If y'all never, uh, if y'all never like became actors, what would you, what would y'all be doing? Uh, uh, if y'all never, became I'd be actors? teaching acting. I'd be teaching acting. <laughs> what would you do? Uh, Honestly, I had a pretty good run as a pizza delivery guy. I know it's surprising. That was my answer. I get twelve. I, I one time I got a tip for twelve bucks on a pizza. I was seventeen. Twelve bucks is a lot now. So I liked pizza. All right. Probably worked my way up to sauce guy. <laughs> I know what you'd be doing. Don't be humble. He'd be race car driving. I would not. I'd be building furniture. You would. Yeah. Do you know that but Skeet has a long lineage of race car in his blood? I got a three generations of NASCAR in my blood. Okay, I'm sorry. Race they, car? This is NASCAR. Anybody here a NASCAR fan? <laughs> tell, tell, tell your All right. heritage. Uh, my uncle's Ricky Rudd. If any of yeah, you ever yeah, you know Ricky NASCAR. Rudd. Ricky Rudd. Too, right. too soon. <laughs> too too soon. Question. Thank you for your question. Hey, Matthew wants Jamie to feel included in my question. Okay. Because I asked a fan question. Uh oh, I got scared. So. Screen is credited with be becoming in like the beginning of meta movies, and your character Randy Meeks had a lot to do with that. What do you make of that? What do I make of it? Yeah, you you created this whole trend. I did it. I was part of it, but I will say there's one magical moment. Well, there's a lot in the movie. So Kevin wrote the script, and like you said, you know, my generation, our generation would watch Halloween. We would watch Nightmare, and we would say those stuff. Like, hey, man, don't drink. Don't, don't walk in the barn. Oh, you had sex. Don't keep your top on. Oh, you're dead, you know. <laughs> when I was on the couch watching Halloween saying, Jamie, look behind you, and Ghostface was there trying to kill me, 
I'm going, Jamie, look behind you. The craziest meta of meta is that he cast an actor named Jamie. <laughs> now that, I, I, everything in the movie was planned. That, I'm pretty sure it wasn't, because like I said, I had to read 16 times. <laughs> so that was crazy. The, but the fact that we start meta is wild. And it's just, it's cool because people feel more included because now they can comment and feel like, oh my God, my voice, I'm saying what they think. So it's really a pleasure to be there. Good question. The Jamie was wild. Hi. Hi. Um, just wanted to say, first of all, it's an honor to meet all of y'all. Um, I grew up with you watching Scooby-Doo and Riverdale. I watched it recently. So F.P. Jones was my favorite character. Oh, thank you. Um, I That's just wanted to ask, how it. was it getting into different characters from, like, so F.P. Jones is obviously very different from the character you were in in Scream, and same for Shaggy and Stu. So how was it for you getting into those different characters and personalities? I, you know, I mean, it's kind of just what we do. Um, but, I mean, there's a lot, there's a long process of it. So uh, I, each one is unique and, and fun and, and such a puzzle. So uh, it, they're all different, but every, and each actor's process is different in doing that. But, but after 30 some years of doing it, I don't think a whole ton about it anymore. Um, it just kind of happens. I learned to, to trust my body and um, that it's usually telling me the answers. So I don't know. It, it's a long, tough question, but, but it's a fun life. Thank you. Thank you so much. And again, I just want to thank you all for, you know, making me realize it's okay to be who I am, and there's nothing bad with that. So. Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> thank you for being you. Thank you. That was the last question. Um, I think we're rounding out the end. Although we didn't really announce the last question, so I'm gonna go looking for the last question. <laughs> um, who has a good one though? It's gotta be. It's gotta be for all three of us. What happened to this row? This row's like I'm out. <laughs> I hate Matthew Lillard. That dude's a dick. <laughs> all right. Is it a, a question for all three of us? All right, come here. Hi, how are you? How are you? Great. Um, for all three of you, who is your favorite ghost face, not from the original? That's not the last question. <laughs> no, I haven't seen any We're of gonna have it. We are the only ones that care about us. We, uh, us. No. Who is your favorite ghost face? And uh, to be honest, I didn't see... I saw two. I didn't see three or four. And then what was the last one? Five? Oh, I saw four. My favorite ghost face is Skeet. Thank you. Jamie, do you have a question or an answer? No, I agree. I, you guys are my favorite ghost face. What are y'all most looking forward to? Not uh, residual right, checks. That was not the last question. <laughs> <laughs> we want something esoteric. Uh, no, I don't have it. I'm, I'm looking forward to them continuing to hold up great films that the fans love. That's the only thing I care about. Make a good movie so that people love it and that the fans that love the franchise are satisfied. And I thought they did a great job with five. That was five, right? Last one was five? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's it. Should we go one more or is that, is that it? One more question. It's something crazy. You got a crazy question? Is it a crazy question or is it a fanboy question? Crazy question? Let's get it, my man. All right. I think you're going to regret the crazy question idea. All right. Go ahead. Um, this is for all of you. Um, if, if uh, how would Shaggy feel if he were in the scene and you were to cross over to Riverdale and be in a cartoon version of Jamie and also Ghostface? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? that was the most inclusive forced question. That's a great, that's your he's last like, question. He's like, that's, that's your last question. He's like, that's a great what question. was the question? How would you feel if Shaggy went to Riverdale and then was a ghost whisperer? <laughs> that's like the turd duck. I was saying, how would Shaggy and the Mystery Inc. gang react if they had a mystery in Riverdale and they met Ghostface also with your character and he teams up with him like an apprentice? 
the poor translator is like, I don't know how to deal yeah. with that. Um, yeah, work out. They would be amazed at Skeet's ass. That's <laughs> <laughs> the mystery would be like, how is he so handsome when he's 68 years old? <laughs> he's beautiful. <laughs> I think we're winding down, but right, um, I do want to say we gotta think about it. thank you again to everybody. I hope you had a good time. I hope you've enjoyed the con. This is a great, great venue. Uh, you all have been so lovely and nice and kind, and uh, I can't thank you enough for that. We love you, and thank you. We love you. Thank you, San Antonio. Go Spurs! Um, don't be hating. Listen, listen. Uh, everyone in this arena appreciates your attendance and their support, your support. Thank you so much. Love you guys. Thanks, everybody.